Hey guys, I'm going to show you something that I think is really, actually everybody who sees it thinks it's really cool and it's really fun to just watch. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to turn pine into oak. Pine's a lot less expensive than oak. Um, and for this application, we actually have other reasons, other technical reasons why we're using pine instead of oak. But we're going to try and put these pine pieces in with oak pieces so we want them all to match. Uh, or if let's say you built a bookcase out of pine and you want it to look like oak because it's more expensive and beautiful and all that kind of stuff, then we're going to show you how to make pine into oak. We're going to need a couple of things. Uh, the first thing is going to be natural wipe, just regular stain that you get at your store. I'm not sure why I shake things like Matt does whenever I hold them up, but I'm going to stop doing that now. And uh, so we have natural stain. We're going to use that just to seal the wood so that our the next step doesn't soak in. We want this to kind of float on top. And this is this is called wiping stain or it's sold as gel stain. Either one, this should be the same thing. It's just a really thick paste of a stain. Um, we have a graining comb. Uh, this is available at your DIY store. They sell them at Lowe's and at Home Depot. Uh, this is made for doing faux graining for what I'm about to do. I have a clean uh, shop rag for wiping the stain on. Uh, we will not be using, we'll be using that for this. Uh, to apply this stuff and do our graining, we're going to use a cheapo chip brush. It doesn't, you're not trying to get a, a high quality finish out of your stain. You're just trying to apply a, a rough coat. Um, and I've got a, a paint can opener. These come in handy. Don't use a screwdriver. There's one other item that is completely required for doing this uh, because we don't want it to look like pine. We want it to look like oak. And that is a whisk broom. This should be about $2 at the grocery store. These, this is the cheapest. The only thing you got to make sure of is that uh, the straw have, isn't going to fall out of it. That's it. All right, so the first step is I'm just going to wipe on a nice, fairly generous coat of natural stain. And I'm doing that just to kind of oil fill the pores of the wood so it's not thirsty. I don't want to use a piece of thirsty wood uh, to, to do what we're going to do. Um, and I, I may just run over this twice uh, to be thorough, but just very quickly doing this. Now, what I want to do is make sure that I have penetrated and filled all the surface pores with this clear stain, uh, this natural stain. So I, I'm giving it two quick not dripping, but, but wet coat, so you can see the stuff pile up on the surface. We'll give this about, about two minutes to sit and soak in to make sure that we've, it's going to go as far as it's going to go. Um, and then we'll just wipe off the excess. All right, so these are cleaned off, or I don't want to say dried off, but they're wiped off. So there's no, there's no liquid on the surface anymore. Uh, these are nice and smooth and beautiful and stuff. Now, if this were a really fine piece, I would give it a, I would give it a thin single coat of a clear coat before I continue. But for this, for what we're trying to do here, all I'm trying to do is get kind of close, uh, uh, set it up so that the fact that it's pine and not oak doesn't scream at you. But I'm not, I'm not trying to sell it as perfectly close up, but you'll be surprised at how good it comes out. So I'm going to do a, a demo first on a piece of this gray scrap center we had. And I'm going to do that so you can see what, what's going on. I'm going to show you a couple different ways, and I'm going to show you what not to do. Um, and uh, I'm doing this so that you'll be able to see the grain uh, that we're creating without being distracted by the grain of the actual pine underneath. So this is a, a relatively thin brush marky. Uh, in other words, I'm not trying to hide brush marks or let it flow or anything like that. Just a thinly brushed out area of gel stain. This is my graining comb. I've got it so that when I look at it this way, it has a U shape, like so. This stuff dries fairly quickly, so we're going to work in sections. And um, when I say dry, it just gets sticky. Um, so I've got it brushed out. And what I'm going to do is set my comb and very slowly draw my comb forward. And at the same time, I'm also rocking it. Uh, now, here's what not to do. Um, what not to do is to place your comb and rock it back and forth like this. Um, now, that is a, a valid thing to do, but that is certainly a pine uh, pattern that you would not see in oak. That is crap, 
and we are going for oak. So um, here is a different pattern in oak. <clears throat> it is rocked and back, but it is, uh, it is a, a, the rocking compared to the pulling is very slight. And when I do, uh, when I, when I do have to move over, I move over and just try to, to basically follow. You're not going to try and follow a grain line. Um, it will, it will be a straight pull line, but I'm going to try and just keep, keep each stripe parallel to the, to the last. As I go, uh, the, my, my comb is going to fill with stain. So I need to clean that out. And generally what I'll do is just have a little bit of mineral spirits and a, um, uh, and I'll, I'll just wipe this out or even dip it in a little container of mineral spirits and then wipe it off with a rag. All right, so let's go to our actual piece. Now, the, the, you're going to see the color difference a little bit more dramatically here. And I am going to try and do this all in one shot. So I am applying stain. Again, I'm doing this relatively thinly. As, as opposed to a coat of paint where you're actually trying to really get coverage out of it, all I'm trying to do is make sure I've got a color supply on this thing. And, uh, and that color supply is going to let us, actually what we're going to be doing is removing a lot of that color with the graining comb. I'm going to make a final pass here, smoothing that stuff out. Get our brush out of the way. Grab our Mr. Graining Comb. And I'll actually use the edge of the board as a guide And I can also do it both ways. Stop. That looks terrible. OK, so <laughs> um, as I said before, if we're doing a nicer piece, we would clear coat it first to seal the wood. Well, the problem that we started ended up with is, uh, is that the pine was still porous enough that it was absorbing a lot of color. And we don't want that to happen. We just want it to be basically pine shade even. So we, we wiped that down with, uh, with some mineral spirits, cleaned it up, sanded it, and uh, clear coated it twice. Just really quickie, two, two shots of clear coat. And uh, uh, I've done one already to make sure that my new process was, was working properly. And uh, now I'll, we'll actually do this for real. It is the whole skirting disaster thing. It, it doesn't make any sense if we don't show you our mistakes. So that was one of them, and that's the solution so far. I am uh, I'm wiping this with mineral spirits, this clear coat, very quickly, and that is just to slow down the drying of my, of my gel stain. So I'm going to do a thin coat of gel stain. And we're going to attack this guy and get it right this time. And then a bit more quickly this time, hit it with my whisk broom. And that is definitely acceptable. So uh, there it is. We'll let this dry, really set up. It'll take about an hour and a half, and then shoot that with some clear coat. And then from that point on, We'll treat it the same as we do our actual oak. So that's it. Uh, tell your mom I said hi, and uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs>